in 2023 in this part of the world and trust me in ethiopia they are still in 2015 yes the ethiopian calendar says it's now 2015 remember ethiopia they follow their own calendar they do have their own calendar and us who are following the gregorian calendar we are in january 2023 while the ethiopian calendar is in april 2015. it's a brand new year we do have a brand new setup of things here we have changed the way we are doing our things here on african eyes radio we've made some improvements in our feature are uh, the unsung heroes whereby now it will be called to us a freedom fighter yes this is the feature whereby we will be featuring those freedom fighters whom in the eyes of others they deemed to be so evil but to us they were freedom fighters those are the changes that we have made to this feature of the unsung heroes whereby now it will be called to us a freedom fighter yes so stick with us uh, like our facebook page like our youtube channel grow with us as we want to grow with you as well in knowledge support this movement and be part of the revolution Africa have had great leaders. Some were celebrated and some were not. Meet our giant in whom to many is a terrorist, but to us a freedom fighter. I am just one of many, a foot soldier. There will be many, many more to follow. So, there is no court of law, no police force, no army that will stop the tide of revolution from turning. There is no punishment that you can lay out in this court. No law your government can pass that will kill the will of the people. Because we will fight. We will continue to fight until all our people are free. And maybe we can even free you from yourselves. So you can hate us, degrade us, torture us, and kill us. But we will fight. And we will be free. One day, we will be free. Manza!
Solomon Kalushi Mashangu was born as the second son of Martha Mashangu in Pretoria on 10th July 1956. His father left in 1962 and as a result he was raised by his mother a domestic worker. He attended Mamelodi High School up to standard 8 in his 10th year of school but his education was interrupted in 1976 by the riots of Soweto uprising that resulted in school closures. Mashangu in 1976 fled to Mozambique and spent six months in a refugee camp near Kaitai. From there, he was taken to an African National Congress ANC training camp called Engineering in Angola. There and at Funda camp he received training in sabotage, military combat, scouting and politics. Together with George Lucky Mashangu and Monde Motlao were then taken to Swaziland where they were given large suitcases filled with pamphlets, rifles and hand grenades. On 11th June 1977 they crossed the border into South Africa and started making their way to Johannesburg. The three comrades in struggle each carrying a large suitcase were boarding into a taxi in Diagonal Street in the center of Johannesburg. A black policeman, a traitor, became suspicious and grabbed one of the suitcases. An AK-47 assault rifle and a hand grenade fell out. All three of them fled in the ensuing gun battle. Two civilian men were killed and other two wounded. Mashangu and Motau were eventually arrested. Mashangu's trial started in the Supreme Court on 7th November 1977. He was defended by two advocates, Mesar Ismail Muhammad and Clifford Mera. They faced two counts of murder, two counts of attempted murder, and various counts under the Terrorism Act. In its judgment, the court found that Mashangu and Motau had acted with a common purpose in that it was consequently did not matter which of the two had done the shooting and killing. Mashangu was convicted on all counts. In terms of the South African law, the court was obliged to sentence an accused to death for murder unless the accused proved mitigating circumstances. The court found that Mashangu had failed to do so and consequently handed down the death sentence. The court refused Mashangu leave to appeal. His lawyers then asked the appeal court for leave to appeal and it was again refused. Yes, in the bell's court, a cockroach never wins the case. Mashangu was hanged on 6th April 1979 with the parting words, Tell my people that I love them and that they must continue the fight. My blood will nourish the tree that will bear the fruits of freedom. A luta continua. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission examined the cases of Solomon Mashangu and Monty Motau and found that both of them were responsible for the deaths of Rupert Kessner and Kenneth Wolfendel. It was also found both Mashangu and Motau guilty of gross human rights violations. Lastly, it found both the African National Congress and the commanding officer of Mkonto Wesis were guilty of gross human rights violations. Solomon Mashangu's legacy is commemorated in the Solomon Mashangu Freedom Square in his hometown of Mamelodi, Pretoria. In Tanzania, one of the top universities is Sokoine University of Agriculture in the east region of Morogoro. One of the two campuses in Morogoro town is known as Solomon Mashangu Campus. In 2022, Rhodes University in Makanda renamed Jan Smart Hall the largest residence on the campus after him, reducing our heroes' visions to streets, shopping malls, hospitals, stadiums, and slogans is not what we are interested in, but continuing with the legacy left behind by them and pass it on to the next generation to continue with the struggle. That's the best contribution we all can do in this short life we have been given on earth. Otherwise, our children and our children's children will blame us for leaving a cowardice legacy to them. Solomon Mashangu, a terrorist to many, 
but to us a freedom fighter. Africa. freedom fighter. Meet me again next time when I will bring you another freedom fighter mistakenly deemed as a terrorist. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel if you like the contribution that we are doing to the struggle. Be part of the revolution. Join an organization. Oh,